May the beautiful truth of the love of God and Jesus Christ strengthen your life each and every day. Amen. What are you looking for? It's a great question. I've been building on this season of Epiphany as a building block for the work of our congregation in 2020 to set a God-ordained vision for our future together. Where and what is God calling us to, to serve and to love in the name of Christ? I look forward to our continuing discussions, but the Epiphany readings here are so wonderful to help remind us again of the components of vision work, 2020 vision. What are we looking for? What are you looking for is a good way to talk about what are you paying attention to? The, the Isaiah text itself speaks of that. It says of the gospel here, listen to me, O coastlands, pay attention, you peoples from far away. Now, what are we paying attention to as the people of God? It's a great question individually, and it's a great question for us as a congregation. What do you pay attention to? It's been many, many years since I studied psychology back at Augustana College back in Rock Island, Illinois, but I did remember a few things from that time. And one was the beautiful nature of the brain, all the complexity, and it's only the discoveries have just been profound over these last 30, 40 years. The reticular activating system, the RAS, is a part of your brain, and it's a part where the brain is controlling sleeping and waking and paying attention. It's an important part of the brain. Now, there's a simple example that when you pay attention to buying a new car, I have now a Subaru, and I picked that up a year ago. I had no idea there were that many Subarus on the road until I bought a Subaru. They are all over the place because it's important to me, and so my brain will select out and, and uh, pay attention to such things. It's a, it's a reminder of what we are paying attention to, the values and goals but the reticular activating system also will perceive threats. It'll take stimuli from the eye and from the ear and from pain from the uh, nervous system and certainly will pay attention to that which we perceive as threat. We as people of faith are called to have a daring confidence in the grace of God, that we'd stake our life on it a thousand times as Luther wrote so many years ago. A daring confidence. So that's, that's us as the people of American Lutheran Church. That's you and I as individuals. And this is a, a blessing to know that when we pay attention to the love of God, that our congregation, speaking of the reticular activating system in our brain, we as the people of God can be a faith activating system. All that we do is meant to encourage people to receive and to share the love of God, grace upon grace upon grace. So the rest of the sermon will be this encouragement for us to pay attention to what God is doing and to pay attention to the opportunities in which we can move forward. And I wanted to uh, give another shout out to Mary Grebeel. That use it or lose it from a 105-year-old person is a, really an amazing epiphany for me. I asked her just a little bit more, what do you mean by that user to lose it? She looked at me just a little incredulously, but she said it this way. Use your family, use your friends, use your faith. And at first I was a little confused by what do you mean by use it, but it just is as simple as this. Your family and friends and faith, use them. Don't pull back on your life. When you need family, you call on them. And when they need you, you serve them. When your friends need you, you call and you serve them. And when you need friends, use them as friends. And on your faith, use it or lose it. Isn't that a simple and beautiful way of describing a powerful approach of faith-activated life? God goals. Now, for us as an organization known as a church, it's interesting to have goals the first text spoke in Isaiah about this, that the goal went from the people of Israel and it shifted right over to this beautiful phrase. It's too light of a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. 
new things springing forth, a new understanding, not just for a specific uh, tribe, but moving out into the world. And this is, I think, our opportunity, a singing a new song. Psalm 40, verse 3 says it this way, The Lord will put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God, and many shall see and stand in awe and put their trust in the Lord. Opportunities for you and for me. The gospel text, it says, and I just love the bell choir and their, um, and Jan singing, the Lamb of God, words of describing, taking away the sin of the world, God's own life brought into harmony with you and I, God taking our sin and taking it fully for full forgiveness. Lamb of God is not used that much these days. That, that, that metaphor made a lot of sense to people of faith, and I think we still attempt to keep it live. But for this time period, I think I could suggest to you that any look at the news is at least 90% based on fear. Would you agree? It's a fearful time. Always fear of war and rumors of war, of the economy, and certainly of our own issues of aging and moving forward in life, the community of faith and, and sharing the love of God. And so this idea that we are part of this faith activating system, I hope is encouraging to you. John said it this way, I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. And this movement, this question, what are you looking for, can be translated, what are you searching for? What are you trying to get to the bottom of? It's not just simply a passive looking. And in life, it's an interesting question, isn't it? If I ask that question to you, what are you seeking? What do you want to get to the root of in your life? We have 17 new members joining us next week. What a great collection of people joining. What a great collection of people. And I ask them, what are you looking for? Is it to get closer to God or to form a new community, to be part of a loving community, or to serve and help other people? Or is it to uh, move forward and to be more generous in life and to team up and be a steward of all the gifts that God has given you? And for each person, it's unique, but bluntly, we want all of it. We want to grow closer to God. That's what worship is about. That's what the beautiful music is about. That's what preaching is about. The Bible studies, the spiritual retreats, it's a hallmark of this church. People want to be part of a community where they are loved and able to share love. People want and need that. People need to be reminded of all the gifts that God has given, including their very life. It is unfinished business for me to help you, the congregation, each one of us individually, to fully receive the gifts that God has placed in your life. I've heard now from several, more than several, which is, why am I here? What are my gifts? What an awesome opportunity for our church to be a faith-activating system to encourage people to receive and to share the gifts no matter what age it may be. This movement of seeking and what are you looking for comes with a, uh, another interesting question. The disciples asked him, where are you staying? And that question or, or that word staying is, where are you abiding? Where are you at? This culture we live in where things move so quickly from topic to topic, to be able to sustain the love of God is what our congregation is about. Certainly in the sacraments in which we share the communion and baptism, but also just the grace of proclaiming the love of God, that there is something steady in life, that there is an abiding presence of God's love, and that is a hallmark of our vision and for the future. And then the last one. Come and see what Jesus says. Isn't that just the greatest, shortest invitation words? Come and see. I encourage you as you work with your family and your friends and your neighbors, or perhaps God puts a person that you just meet, and somehow it opens to the discussion of faith and love, and you invite someone to church, you can say this. Come and see. You have no other responsibility than to team with the Holy Spirit, whose job it is to touch the person's heart. Come and see. And this see is a uh, beautiful future tense word in the Greek. You will see. Not just come and see. You will see when you're searching for those things that are deep into your heart. 
I wanted to end with this, the encouragement for a vision. It ends with the discussion with Andrew bringing his brother Simon, known as Peter. And you know of Peter through the gospel text. If he's new to you, he is a marvelous human being. He is the person of the greatest faith, and he totally loses it. He's like you and me. And so here is a statement of the future of, of a, a beautiful phrase. Jesus looks at Simon, who's been brought by his brother. You are Simon, son of John, but you are to be called Cephas, which is Peter, which means rock. What a beautiful statement of hope. Hope for you and for me that God's love builds us into something that we can scarcely see. Hope for our congregation to be called into life and love and a faith activating system that we can scarcely understand. What are we looking for? We're looking for the love of God and a community of faith where we use our gifts and we love and serve one another. And I ask for God's blessing to help us clarify this to the glory of God. In Jesus' name. Amen.